You know, we as churches have an advantage over most of the other organizations out there in one regard, and that would be the fact that we create content constantly. Most churches I know are video recording their sermons every single week. So even if you're not doing weekly Bible studies or small group videos or ministry highlights, you still have pieces of content that can be edited and then shown to a digital audience. But that's just it. They need to be edited. And as a video editor myself, I get asked all the time what editing software I use. And honestly, I've used quite a bit. So without further ado, let's talk about the three most popular options to figure out which one is best for you. How's it going everybody? My name's David. I'm the head video editor here at ReachRite and now more than ever, it's more of a need rather than a luxury for churches to be able to edit their sermons or their content and put it in front of a digital audience. And so a lot of churches find themselves asking, number one, how do I edit? But then also, what do I use to edit? The truth is there's so many different editing softwares out there that can get the job done. So the real question is, what makes them different? Well, today we're gonna look at the three most popular options and I believe that most churches are using one of these three. Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Premiere Pro. Each one of these programs costs a different amount, one of them is even free, and they all have their own set of strengths and weaknesses. But as I said before, all three of these options are gonna be able to get the job done when it comes to editing your sermons and even making little social media clips in a vertical format. And by the way, if you wanna learn how to make those little social media clips of your sermons for free, not using any of these softwares, but just an app on your phone really easily, we actually have a video showing you exactly how to do that that we'll put right up here in the corner. And we're constantly making videos like these to help churches just like yours. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you can be notified every time we release a new video. But without further ado, let's talk about our first popular editing software. The first software we're gonna talk about today is Final Cut Pro. Now, this is not available on PCs. It is Mac only. It's made by Apple themselves, so you know that it's a reputable, polished product. And the easiest way I can describe this is if you've ever used something like iMovie, this is kind of the more mature adult version of iMovie with a lot more features. That being said, I'm not really a Mac user and it's been a while since I've used Final Cut Pro, so I've had to rely heavily on research for this one. But coming in with a one-time purchase of just $300, this is a very budget-friendly option to get a lot done. Most of us that edit sermons are working with two different camera angles we need to work between. We need to put up some scripture references every now and then, maybe do some color correction or audio editing, and we need to cut out some unnecessary parts of the service for the online version. And rest assured, Final Cut can handle all of that very easily. The other nice thing about Final Cut Pro if you're an Apple user is you can actually import your projects from your Mac to your iPad and continue editing from there. And yes, it can edit your little social media clips and format them correctly for a vertical cell phone format. The one thing I will say is that it does seem a little bit behind when it comes to AI integration and having certain features available that editors seem to be fond of right now. For instance, from what I can tell, those little sermon clips, being able to actually analyze the audio and automatically add subtitles for you instead of having you put in every single word manually. It doesn't seem to have that built in, but there is an added on app that somebody else made where they wrote some code and it integrates with Final Cut Pro, but you need to purchase that as an additional app. Or you can just do most of your editing in Final Cut Pro other than the auto subtitles, export that, and then put it into another software to get your auto captions like something for free on your phone, like CapCut. Overall though, out of the three options we're talking about today, I am the least experienced with Final Cut Pro, but I can still guarantee you that this can do everything you need it to do when it comes to basic sermon editing for churches. The next option that we're gonna talk about today, you've probably heard of, and that's DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is made by a company called Blackmagic Design, who continues to be on the rise as well, and it actually started as a premium option for color management and color grading and color treatment for films after the editing process is done, but now it's really dipped its toe into a full-on editing software. DaVinci Resolve has been on the rise, especially in the last five years or so, because it is an extremely powerful editing tool that's completely free. They do have a paid version called DaVinci Resolve Studio for $2.95, that's a one-time payment, and it gives you more features, but honestly, the free version, it's shocking how much it can do. You can use DaVinci Resolve whether you're a Mac user, a PC user, or apparently even Linux. In the editing world, DaVinci Resolve is kind of making waves right now because there's a lot of well-known professional editors that have switched from Premiere Pro over to DaVinci because it can kind of do everything they need for a much cheaper, sometimes free price. Before this week, I hadn't even used DaVinci Resolve yet, so I was pleasantly surprised when I downloaded, installed, and was able to figure out how to edit a basic sermon within about an hour. So obviously for churches, the fact that this is free and low budget even at the paid version, and that you can figure it out relatively easy, 
this is a plus. As a season Premiere Pro user, I can tell you that DaVinci Resolve is going to be able to do anything that you want it to do that you're expecting Premiere Pro to do. And that includes making those short vertical social media clips of your sermons. This does have auto caption feature built into it, but that's only for the paid studio version. So just keep that in mind. But once again, you can do all of your editing in here, export it, and then get auto captions from another free software like CapCut if you want. Honestly though, for a one-time payment of $2.95 for DaVinci Resolve Studio, I think that is an extremely reasonable investment that you'll get a lot out of. Now, something to note is that for the free version of DaVinci Resolve, it supports 8-bit video, 60 frames per second, and up to 4K, but it won't go beyond 4K. DaVinci Resolve Studio supports 10-bit video up to 120 frames per second, and it goes beyond 4K resolution. So if you're looking to dip your toe into the pool of editing softwares that are out there, DaVinci Resolve is a great place because it's on the rise right now. There's tons of support and great tutorials for it, tons of plugins being made. It's completely free, at least to get started with. And if you do decide to get the studio version, it's only 295 to go up to, which I think is pretty reasonable. And lastly, we're going to talk about the premium option out of all three of these softwares being Premiere Pro. I say premium because this is without a doubt the most expensive option. As far as I can tell, you can no longer just flat out purchase Premiere Pro. It is a subscription based software only. All right, this is a quick editor's note because Adobe's pricing can definitely be confusing. If you were to purchase Premiere Pro under a business account, it would be $35.99 per month and that's billed annually. Now they don't have a nonprofit or church category, so the other two options would be to purchase Premiere Pro as an individual or a student plan, which would come out to $20.99 per month build annually. If you purchase it as an individual, not a student or a business, there is an additional option to purchase it monthly, which allows you to cancel at any time for $31.49 a month. Now here's where it gets crazy. You can choose to buy a Creative Cloud subscription, which gives you over 20 Adobe apps, including Premiere Pro. Other popular Adobe apps that people use are things like Photoshop or Illustrator, so it might be worth considering for you. If you purchase Creative Cloud as a business, it's $84.99 a month billed annually. As an individual, it's $54.99 a month billed annually. But a student discount can give you the entire Creative Cloud subscription for $19.99 a month billed annually. And again, this includes Premiere Pro. Now, obviously, every church is in a different situation, and I'm not sure how you would prefer to sign up. But I do know a lot of churches actually have individuals on their creative team that do their editing for them that have their own student membership for the Creative Cloud. So it is something to be aware of. So with all that being said, is it worth it? It's gonna be able to handle anything that you can throw at it. When it comes to features, it would take a lot less time for me to explain what it can't do rather than what it can do. So when it comes to talking about the weaknesses of Premiere Pro, the list is pretty short. Adobe has kind of caught some flack because they're kind of behind the ball when it comes to integrating these AI implementations that editors are looking for. But that's not to say that Premiere Pro doesn't have these AI integrations. It just seems like Adobe takes a while to roll them out. But at the time of recording, it actually has everything that I'm looking for when it comes to AI implementation, including the automatic captions or subtitles when it comes to the short form vertical video of the sermon clips, for example. All of that being said, I've still stuck with them all these years and it's still my editing software of choice and I definitely would still recommend it to people other than the fact that it's extremely expensive. Also, if I didn't say this before, Premiere Pro is available on both Mac and PC. So which one of these editing softwares should you go with? Well, like I said before, all three of these are gonna be able to get the job done very well. But since this video is keeping churches in mind, and I know that the average church is around 70 people for attendance, I know a lot of us are kind of on a tight budget. And for that reason, I would definitely recommend DaVinci Resolve. Like I said before, it's completely free. And even the paid version is a little less than $300 at a one-time payment that's a great value. And even in my limited experience using it, I was able to edit a sermon for my church with multiple camera angles, scripture references, different image references, and be able to treat the audio, color correction, all of that kind of stuff within an hour. So it's compatible on PC, Mac, and Linux. It's completely free, and even the paid version is honestly pretty affordable. It's really powerful, and it can do everything that I needed it to do, and that's coming from somebody who's seasoned in Premiere Pro. I think DaVinci wins without a doubt. Video editing is a creative process, and for that reason, I feel like every video editor you talk to might have a slightly different answer on what editing software is best. Maybe there's one out there that I didn't even cover, and if that's the case, let me know in the comments below or if you had any questions that I didn't cover. But otherwise, we'll see you in the next upload.